Okay, here we have a Sony A7 II or A7 Mark II. Nothing really to the box. If we take it to the back, pretty much just shows features of the camera and future accessories that you may want to purchase later on. Sony pretty much packs their box boxes pretty light and small. Nothing really to the box except here's an A7 strap. It's a lot smaller than what you would expect coming from any type of DSLR. And this one actually comes with the charger block and a charging cable. The A6000 just comes with the charging cable, so that's a nice accessory that they probably should have added anyway. And as you see on the back here, you have an articulating screen. It's a high resolution and it's pretty nice. It's non-touch screen. The, the articulating part is very similar to the A6000 if you're familiar with that camera body. They have added a lot of custom function buttons and manual exposure buttons and stuff like that. The steady shot inside here is an inside or internal 5-axis image stabilization. That 5-axis is compatible with uh, native Sony electronic lenses. If you use a manual lens, it will revert itself to a 3-axis. It claims up to 4 stops, I believe, of image stabilization. I don't know if I've experienced 4 stops, but I definitely experienced an improvement. One kind of pet peeve for me personally is this SD card door. It opens very easily with just a touch of the hand. And I find when I grip the actual camera body, my palm often pops it open. Now if you look here, these are the imports for the HDMI mini and multifunctional USB port for triggers and charging. The microphone input and headphone jack as well. This is supposed to be somewhat weather sealed or dust and moisture resistant camera body, but if you look at these actual tabs, there's no rubber around them at all, even around, well there's a little bit around the SD card slot. It makes me a little nervous because I don't know how that plastic on plastic or plastic on metal is supposed to keep any type of moisture or dust or any type of uh, water out of the body at all. The original A7 had the shutter placement on top. I prefer the actual, coming from Canon, I actually prefer the aperture right here or the shutter speed right there and the actual wheel to be an aperture. But one thing I can say, they changed the button here, the shutter button, and people say that they like it compared to before. Me personally, I shot with Nikon and Canon and this jog wheel right here for the shutter or you can make it aperture. If, you, if the grip would make your hand a little lower, it would be a natural fit for your finger, your pointer finger here to actually turn that dial. But because my middle finger is so close to it, the bottom edge of my pointer finger is actually rubbing the dial, which feels a little awkward. It feels like it should be more in the middle. Like the actual, uh, like the actual button should be a little higher up or the grip should have allowed my hand to be placed a little lower on the actual jog wheel or compared to where the jog wheel is located. If you look here, the actual screen this time is actually pushed inside and the actual base mount here is a lot thicker than the original A7. And this also has a metal lens mount as well. The camera itself is really nice. Uh, the only thing that bothers me personally is just the actual ergonomics of the actual body itself is a little... You have to get used to it, especially if you're coming from a, a traditional DSLR. It's It, it kind of resembles more of a Nikon body where the shutter and aperture is placed this time. Everybody's focused on the grip itself saying that's better, but the actual, I don't know, it feels very awkward. I don't even have the largest of hands, so I can only imagine if my hands are too big for the dial to fit directly in the middle of my pointer finger, how somebody with larger hands may feel about that. I've never heard anybody complain about that or say it was an issue. It, it is something you'd have to get used to, but to me, it does not feel natural. It feels a little awkward and I feel like I have to go out of my way or it feels more natural for me to use my middle finger and my pointer finger on the shutter. But other than that, I think this is a great camera. Uh, the image quality is very comparable to my Mark III. I think this is a great companion to a DSLR. I'm excited about the lens body. I have a lot of FD lenses that I currently use for my Blackmagic camera that can be adapted to, to this camera as well. You get great image quality. I personally wouldn't shoot above ISO 1600. I would like to keep it at 800, but 16 max personally. If this was helpful at all, please hit like or subscribe. Or if you have any questions, leave a comment below. For anyone wondering where you can purchase any of these items, check the description below or visit www.howtoandreviews.com. Till next time.